Hello everyone, welcome to the Bitcoin market update for Brave New Coin. I'm your host Carl, you trader and portfolio manager at Techemy Capital. Quick disclaimer, this video does not constitute financial advice and is intended for educational purpose only. Well guys, it's been a while, let's uh, dive into the markets, let's have a look at the DXY, then we'll have a look at the SP500 and NASDAQ charts before we dive into the Bitcoin market update and have a look at the the long term, mid and short term on Bitcoin. Um, all right, let's have a look at the DXY. Since my last update, um, nothing really has changed really. It's been at this level here around 100, uh, 111. Um, and like we discussed last time, we will be here, in my opinion, up until the end of 2023, early 2024, when then then we will see a breakdown. So something similar to this rising wedge we saw back in year 2000, when uh, into, into 2002, the drop of the DXY here at the end of the rising wedge and uh, breaking down from the rising wedge marked the, the end of the recession. In my opinion, this, this is what we will see. We could see, actually, I don't want to say with certainty, but we could see something similar develop on DXY here across all the market is we would see something like this. And you could see here we're already starting to show some weakness, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen. But we could see something like this. I wouldn't be surprised one bit to see the DXY forming something like that. And, uh, you know, seeing a sell off in the next few two, two well, one to three months uh, into February 2023 to 106. Then we strongly bounce back up and go back to the highs, especially that we're heading into recession or the recession will be um, confirmed in early 2023. Um, yeah, so we would run back up to 116. We could run a little bit higher here, maybe into 117, 118. Maybe hit that little box here up there as possible. We stay in sideways here, yo-yo around this area, hit 110, 111 again as support, and then maybe 116, it comes 2024 uh, when the recession ends. Um, it'll be really a tough maybe year uh, or two. And then we would um, we would break down the DXY and then the crypto markets and the <clears throat> you know the, the 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 stock market would rally hard from there as DXY sells off. So um, that's that's an idea I'm, I'm thinking will happen. Um, and let's see what what could uh, we'll see what happens in the next few weeks. We'll keep track of this in coming month and uh, we'll um, we'll be clear as time flies. Uh, let's have a look at the SP500. This is my last update. I think last update I was we were here around 3,900 and I 3,900, yeah, roughly around here. And I said um, I would root down that we see a continuation towards the the uh, sell-off and continuation of the bear market in this case. And we did. And if you notice here, we're, we're kind of I realigned a little bit that that uh, recession fractal, the spoof fractal is the 2000, 2002.com bubble bust uh, and recession. And so far we're kind of following uh, the, this fractal. Um, as you notice, we went, we took out the lows here. And if you notice, let me remove that red scenario that was showing you guys like uh, maybe several weeks ago that this would play out and it did. If you notice here, since we topped, we went down, we had some bear market rallies, and then we sold them. We took down the lows here and then went lower, another rally, and we took down the lows. Then we had a huge rally, right? And then went a little bit higher than I anticipated here. I thought we would start at 4,200. Then yet we still went back down. We took out the lows again, and then we're rallying again up. And I think we are right now 3,900. That should be the top on the SP 500. Then we're going to see a sell off comes December or January into towards new lows, which I think we would hit the support at 3,200. Definitely, we could have another um, 
tiny bear market trolley. It's possible into Jan January. Um, depending really, again, depending on the how hawkish uh, the feds are, maybe they'll be dovish and we're going to have to, um, I might be then proven wrong, but I still think they're going to have that hawkish stance and we, they're going to keep increasing rates into next year or so. Um, and that's going to drive the market much lower heading into February and March. And then we will bottom on SP 500 and other markets around March. Um, in, this, in this case of SP5, we'll look at the bottom around 2,400 or 2,300, but we'll see in time um, what happens now. Again, this is where I think we top. This is where we'll know, um, and we're going to get a decision. Actually, tomorrow is the FOMC. Uh, we're going to be getting a 75 base point increase. Um, but, um, and we're going to know from the, the feds are going to be, they're going to be more hawkish or, or not. So if they are going to be more hawkish, I expect a sell off that sell off to continue to happen as I've, we've talked in the past five months together on those videos. Now, if I'm wrong and they're, they start to soften their stand and they, um, they start pointing at being more dovish and stopping, uh, quantitative uh, tightening and they're going to start to quant to do quantitative easing then um then i think yeah then i might be proven wrong if we go higher to 4150 and hit that top here then we we i could definitely be wrong especially if we break out towards here and higher um from the, these levels i still think that's not that's not going to happen i still think we are going to get rejected here we see there are um two rejections so far going on here on the three day chart so let's see what happens in the in the coming weeks um and month there's still a long time i'm not in a rush really to um trade right now um uh, crypto until i see some more um uh, yeah some get some more information from more data from this market uh um, just the risk is still high there's still a lot of uncertainty and the uh, the macros globally are just um, just keep getting worse and worse uh, and with the recession at hand and heading into next year it just doesn't look to me that we are we are going to see some this really frily continue in this bear market i think this this is the end of it now we could go a little bit higher here to 4065 but we shouldn't go higher than that if we do then i might be wrong here and I might have to reconsider my stance uh, and flicking, flipping bullish. All right, let's go to the NASDAQ chart. Um, again, you guys remember um, last time we spoke like uh, on this around a month ago in September, I said that we would see a further, we would lose 11,300 or 600. We did, and I we are following right now this red path that I plotted back then um we're seeing nasdaq is actually quite more quite weaker than the sp500 and dow jones on this rally it's um it doesn't look strong at all similar to bitcoin bitcoin is extremely weak currently and is unable really to uh, put up put a rally similar to the sp500 and and, and the, uh, the dow jones so uh, I think here we would see the Nasdaq continue towards new lows uh, heading into early Q, uh, early 2023, especially beginning 2023. And uh, as discussed before, I'm still expecting to see 7,000 roughly on Nasdaq or uh, 6,800. We'll see what happens, but uh, yeah, that's that's what I think we are doing. Uh, gonna see let's go to start with the bitcoin um market update here let's have a look at the kingfisher liquidation map we see here um we're at twenty thousand five hundred and nineteen. uh there's not much shorts here to squeeze or liquidate here going up um Maybe a little bit at twenty five thousand, but honestly, if we really want, there's not much really to go here. After, I don't think the market makers are gonna go th there. It's the, um, yeah, there's not much really here to do with the shorts. It looks like uh, the bigger cluster of the shorts are at twenty eight k, 
and 29k and 30k uh, if we look lower we see a lot of lot of huge long liquidations waiting for us from 19,800 downward to $13,000 if we go here we go through those we i think if we go through 19 if we go back down to 19,000 there's a huge chance that we we can get down especially if the feds are uh, hawkish into into um, going into november and december into 2023 we would uh, trigger a long cascade liquidation cascade down to uh, 13k um, so I, I think that's more possible, more probable, with a higher probability of happening than actually heading up. Um, so that's what this tells me. But let's have a look at the, the charts and um, see what, uh, what we have there and if we can um, make sense and, uh, and tie up the data all together. This is a CME gap chart. Um, it just shows the gaps typically we've we've been full we've been filling those gaps for a long long time i think it's a 90 percent a chance of filling those gaps if not more um right now we see here on the three-day chart for the cme that we have a gap at 27.28k uh, which if we look back at the king fisher hill condition map it, it looks like yeah we're looking here at this cluster of Short liquidation will be at 28K into 30K. So sure, it could be possible, but there's nothing else here in the middle um, for shorts. So it really has to be pure buyers coming to drive the market up or um, the SP500 Dow Jones uh, taking us higher and Bitcoin finally starting to follow. At the moment, I don't see that, but that's something to keep in mind that, uh, yeah, uh, we could do this, although I think it's least probable that we go up to this gap it's not impossible what i think will happen actually in my opinion is instead of going up like this and and filling that gap i think we would um, see eventually after some sideways some sell-off to fill that gap at 17,300 16,300 on cme and heading down like i've been rooting for at least five months um Fill, go down to 12k to uh, 10k and maybe wake down to 9k's and fill up that gap here at 9,675. That seems more likely to me. Um, so, uh, all right, let's move on here. Let's move on to the monthly chart of Bitcoin. Um, we see here that Bitcoin has been um, in sideways since June 2022 um we've broken a little bit here the log the, the bottom th uh, the third or the bottom ellipsic el ellipse uh, logarithmic uh, support and um, we've been trading below it for quite a while now for what since uh, september october and now we're heading into december trading below it now we haven't seen really a breakdown like i've um I've shown and I've been rooting for here, looking at the purple fractal, which I've been uh, big, uh, siding with big, saying that the bad macros with the recession and possibility of stagflation will drive us down uh, starting, um, comes October, September after, and we would get to sell, sell off towards um, 12, to, uh, 12 to 9 Ks, right? Uh, now in this case, this hasn't happened yet, and we are, if I can arrange this, this bear channel here um, a little bit here to, to squeeze the price in here. But we've been pretty much in sideways here and not doing much. Uh, we are kind of sandwiched and consolidating and in, in sideways in, the, in that tight range, which I'll, I'll zoom in in a bit when I get to the short term chart. Um, but the market here will have to make a decision soon. And... Uh, if we look here, the monthly bands are starting to slowly come together. There's still a long time though, so they could still go either head into sideways here further. I don't, I don't think we will break up like this blue fractal that I've shared with you guys uh, five months ago. 
similar to the bottom of 2019. It's really hard to see that happening viewing, viewing the global macros, unless again the Feds um, become more dovish and they um, and they change their mind and we stop uh, quantitative um, tightening and we start quantitative easing and. Um, uh lowering the rates so we'll have to see what happens um but in my opinion we are more likely still to see a sell-off uh, following my purple fractal to twelve thousand nine thousand dollars which also would be the bottom of this channel here um the bear channel like we've seen in previous bear markets we've always went down uh another big leg down and tried to bottom near the bottom of the the bear, uh, the bear channel here, the bear parallel channel, and the previous bear market, same for 2015. Uh, in this case, I still think we should, we will see a crash, and that will be the last leg down. And if if you guys remember, I've always we've always talked about three drives pattern, uh, three bear street, three drive patterns, and uh, if you remember here, every bear market we had a drop, we did one leg down. And then we did the second leg down and we had a third one in the case of 2000 uh, year 2013 we had a one leg down a second leg down bounce and a third leg down to the bottom of the channel we are still missing those i'm not seeing that right now here so if you see here we have one maybe two and we're still missing the third leg down to the bottom of the bear ch barrel channel, parallel channel. So let, let's see what happens, but that's, um, that's the uh, takeaway from here. Now, if we do break up in the eventual and expected probably that we do break up, we try to follow the blue uh, fractal, which I still think is not really possible unless the feds pivot. We would need to take out, if I want to become bullish, this stop here at 26, 27K of the bear parallel channel has to be taken out. We would need to see Bitcoin really get a strong push uh, and close a monthly around uh, above that 26K um, area. And then, then honestly, yeah, then, then I think we would, then that would make sense, you know, if to, to flip bullish, but right now, uh, long term at least. But right now I still don't see that. It's um yeah, it's kind of least possible to me. Now we could see some more sideways here heading into early 2023. Instead of doing anything, it would just annoy the shit out of everybody and we just stay above 18k or 17Ks, but sandwich between that and maybe 22Ks and do nothing here for another few months. And that that, that that's possible. That's more possible than a heading up, in my opinion. Uh, that said, I'm still expecting a sell-off. I'm still rooting for that sell-off towards 12 to 9K, guys. All right. Um, if you notice here, we are hitting, I think by next, uh, by December, we would hit um, the bottom range, the bottom possible, uh, like the possibility of bottoming compared to previous halving. So this is... 517 days uh, uh, bars from since uh, for um, expe an expectation of the next halving, which is around, it might have moved, but it's May 2024 right now. If we go back from there, 517 days, we're looking at a potential bottom to start forming around December, heading into uh, January, into March of 2023. If you look at previous bear market, this same thing has happened, right? uh taking the halving from may 2020 going backwards 517 days we bottom around that uh that that time december into march so i don't see why why we would not do that here we would i think that's very possible as long as the the feds stay hawkish so december is on the corner then we have another drop down into march that makes the most sense to me uh, con contrary to a, a big, um, um, a lot of influencers out there on social media of, of crypto would think that we are actually going to move from here and see a huge green candle from here. Again, I don't see that um, unless the Fed's pivot tomorrow. Let's see what happens. But I, I, I still am having a hard time seeing that. 
Um, beside that, um, nothing really here to discuss. Let me look at those indicators here. Um, monthly mo um, squeeze momentum here. Looks to red, nothing showing here. Um, really that we could use. RSI is at 42, probably the lowest it's been in, um, in ever in previous bear market, bear markets that ever happened. Um, well, although typically we bottom on in bear markets that have no recession or bad global macros, at 44, we're a little, yeah, a few notches below that now. We even hit 41 before. Okay, let's move on to the worst outcome chart, uh, the worst outcome chart uh, for Bitcoin, uh, potential final bottoms. Um, this is just to consider what's ahead of us. I've been sharing this with you guys for the past uh, five months, if I'm not mistaken. 84% um, drawdown from the current levels and heading into uh, 2023 would take us down to 12,009k area here, uh, which is a very, very strong support. Worst out, uh, the second worst outcome. Now, if that area does not hold, is 7,400 right here with a 90% drawdown from the all time high. So 7,400 to 6,400. And the worst of the worst, which I am having, I don't think we'll really ever get there, but never say never with crypto and w the unprecedented global macros that we have is um 4500 3500 which would be a 94 percent retrace from the all-time high and the target of the inverted cup and handle which i'll overview on the next chart uh, or the chart after this one with you guys uh yeah there's an inverted cup and handle that has a target of 3500 um all right let's move on to the uh this is the amazon chart um amazon fractal chart that we've been overviewing for a long time um i'm keeping track of it just so we know where we are at uh compared to it the, this bit this amazon fractal is from uh, uh year 2000 to 2002 when we had the recession and dot-com bubble right um if you look here We've had some differences, but the peaks and the bottoms have been quite to the to the letter, to the T, really. Um, and if you notice, I've circled the, uh, in the past video, since the uh, last video, those uh, the peaks in green. Uh, and if you notice recently, the bottom here at 17,500, we wicked right into that wick here of the blue fractal. And we, although we didn't have some of those rallies, because probably the macros are much worse than 2000, 2002. Um, um, yeah, so we rallied, we failed to rally higher, for instance, to 20, we didn't get to 28K and we stopped the 25Ks. Um, we do see here though, that there's a, um, a rally here on the blue fractal that peaked at 23K. So that's roughly give and take where we landed uh, recently uh in a rally and um we went back down now instead of breaking down since we overviewed last time we didn't am i i was thinking we'll go to 14k well wrong we did not do that we actually broke out of this log resistance that we're seeing here and popped out a little now since we didn't go to 14k we have to see here if we're getting, if this is this peak here, it's kind of this peak that we're getting, or are we going to go higher? So I don't know. We're just going to have to monitor. But comes the November election, this is very interesting on the Amazon fractal, that, that peak here that we have on the Amazon blue fractal peaks around November election, November 8. So I'll be very interested. I'm actually thinking we would get a top around November 8 when we start sell off from there maybe similar to the Amazon fractal. So I'm going to keep following this. It's not hundred percent, but I want to see if this fractals catches on or if ultimately it fails and we see Bitcoin either going sideways here uh, for a little longer heading into December, or if we see a breakout and this fractal gets um, avoided entirely. Now, if we see a breakout, I would think 20, 22, 20, 000, 22, 700 will be 
a good resistance to stop at. Or we could maybe go with test 24,000, 25,000 uh, 25, dollars. So let's see what happens, but this keeps that in mind. Um, and let's see what happens after November 8th, after the elections. Uh, will we follow back down to 14K and go to 12,000? and eleven thousand dollars that would be quite interesting especially if the feds don't pivot all right let's move on here to the fibonacci weekly uh channel chart um so i'll give this chart some updates since last time but not much um i think last time i we discussed that i was i was thinking we would sell off towards eight thousand or nine thousand or in uh, dollars now we did not get that sell off what I'm seeing here now, if you notice, guys, um, I copied this fractal from from 2015 bottom of the bear market. Why? Well, let me explain to you guys. You see here the weekly Bollinger Bands were squeezing tight. Now, we did not get a move because we're in sideways. Notice how if we don't break up in a direction, strong in a direction this week or the next, my, my opinion, what's going to happen, you're seeing those Bollinger Band here, they're totally flat. They're flattening. The only, there's one time before where we've done that after a huge sell-off where we flatten like this. If you look back, it's in 2015. And that's where actually I was... I was trading the Bitcoin at that time and uh, I bought the bottom around here, 220, 230. If you notice around this area, I copied from this area onward what I think where Bitcoin is currently. And if you notice, the weekly Bollinger Bands at that time have flattened after a big squeeze. We've done kind of something very similar here on Bitcoin right now in 2022 in this bottom. We rallied up, we failed there, we didn't get to get, go to 27Ks. Actually, if you look, um, yeah, which is the weekly Bollinger mid band, we did not even get there. That's how weak the market was, Bitcoin was, compared to um, 2015. In 2015, we actually rallied twice. We tried to rally twice here at the beginning towards the weekly mid band. Now, um, you see, we went back down, went to the bottom, we stayed. We stayed below the weekly mid band for a while and then we broke up and made it uh, rallied up so let's see the next few weeks my bet if we fail to go down and i'm wrong on this sell-off that would take us to uh 12 or um 12 to 9k or even lower per this chart with this Fibonacci channel support bottom, which is at 7,400, 6,400. If we fail to go to 10, $12,000, $10,000, okay, it's very possible that we go end up in being in sideways here on Bitcoin until December and below the weekly Bollinger mid band, which is currently at 20,700. I think that's very likely that we see that uh, we fail and we stay below 20,700. If we cannot break down though, and we'll break uh, in the, until December, I think we'll break up rally similar to 2015, get a, everybody's hope up and we hit 24,200, 24, uh, 25,000, maybe hit 26K and, um, and, and then sell off. Um, and then comes January 2023 into March or April 2023, we bottom and rally uh, across all the markets if we can't fall further. And then we would rally build a new bull market from there heading into 2023 into 2024. So let's see what happens, guys. But this is my uh, what I think would happen. These are more, more probable scenarios than just heading up from here. Again, uh, assuming the bad macros and the recession uh, ahead of us. All right, this is the last chart for today. And um, you guys remember, I was one of the first few uh, people on social media and chartists and traders to put a comparison of the 2000 um, bear market of 2018 
against uh, Bitcoin uh, in 2022, the action of uh, Bitcoin 2022. If you guys remember here, I, I put a triangle here to show you that um, we have similar setups and the green X's mark the action, which was very similar to what we have in 2018. And I told you guys, I told you that we will break down comes the end of this triangle, we're going to sell off hard. And we did. We sold down very hard. We actually didn't wait for the tip here in 2022. We broke down even earlier. So the comparison keeps on uh, going here. And you see here at the bottom, I said, hey, it's possible that we are bottoming some of 2018 or 2019. That said, we have to see that there might be key differences. If you notice, we actually have similar X's as well, similar action until the end here. And let's overview talk about this, right? Look at this here. Let me change the colors. Uh, where is the color here? Well, this is the action, right? This is where I want you to pay attention to. Okay. In red, we had a kind of a Adam and Eve bottom here, and we have a Adam and Eve bottom, or maybe now it's more like a double bottom. And look at the here, my the red circles that I'm putting here and this red circle I'm putting here. Everything is almost the same, except except that right now it's more bearish. Why? Well, let, let me tell you why. So let's take this Fibonacci here and towards the top. Okay. So if we see here, the market, once it topped at the top of the range at that time, back then it was at 4,200, we retraced back down towards the 50% and we held the 50% 50, 50 Fibonacci in, uh, yeah, Fibonacci retracement here, which was at 3,700. Currently we are, look what happened guys. We hit the top, barely the top of the, the range at 23,800, we couldn't even make it to 25,200 again, right? And we failed literally before that, and we sold down. We couldn't hold, look at that. Instead of holding up here, something similar to the blue fractal, right, of, or the bottom of 2019, we couldn't hold the 50% Fibonacci here. And that, Yeah, and that on its own is pretty bearish. Hold on, let me zoom in here a little bit more. But that on its own is does not look very bullish. All right, let's take it from here and rally it up. Yeah, you see we failed, instead of holding a 20,500, we failed to do so, which is the 50% Fibonacci, sorry if that it's too clouded here, but we couldn't get through. We couldn't f find support here and get this, uh, the bulls to hold it up and go for that breakout. So now what we ended up doing, went back to the bottom of the, the, the range at 18,000, 18,800, give and take, uh, 18,900. And we just went into sideways. That's, that's weakness guys. That's not bullish um that does not look good and that's quite worrisome in my opinion um so let me go back here um arrange back this chart a little bit okay so what do we expect from here right that's everybody's question now well this looks weak and notice also before i jump to something else this is pure accumulation here. You can tell this is a pattern of accumulation. In our current case, because we failed to hold 50% retrace and we went back to the, um, the lower of the range, this looks like distribution to me. It doesn't look like whales are accumulating here. I'm not the only one saying that. There's a lot of uh, people, I'm not a Wickoff expert, but a lot of experts at Wickoff are saying the same thing. Um, so this is something to keep in mind. This does not look like accumulation. It looks like distribution for the time being. Now, what I want to see if I want to turn bullish, we want to see Bitcoin rally back up 
towards the top of the descending log uh, resistance here, log of the resistance log here. So that would be rallying up and try to break past 22,600. So this is the first step to, to try to get bullish. Go there and retrace back down, hold up either 20, 21,300 or 20,300. We should not go lower than 20,300. And we should go in sideways and go for a big breakout from here. So this is what we want to see and take out 25K and then rally higher. And we should be doing that heading into November, into December. If we cannot do this, remember, if we cannot do this and instead we see Bitcoin lose the squeeze that it has on the one day Bollinger Band, and we drop back down below that bar, the top daily Bollinger Band, which is currently at 19,900. If we see a retrace back down here and we close it daily here, very, very, very likely, guys, it's better just to exit because this is going to sell off and go back to the bottom of the range around the 18Ks, uh, 18,800, 18,000. 200 and maybe even 17,500 and it's going to get retested now and then from there I don't know most likely it could look to me that comes December we would sell down and go down to the bottom of the of the next log parallel channel uh, which is a bearish parallel channel which is at 10,900 right now give and take so yeah that would hit the, the 12,000 10,000 range that I've, we've been talking about for the past five months together. And if there is worse capitulation than that, we could go much lower to the other, um, the other bottom of the bear parallel channel, which is on the log channel, which would be at 8,000 here, start at $8,000 and it would go down to 7,400. And then before we get any, um, in the, that would be the big capitulation. In that case, though, we would need like a huge, huge uh, news, negative news heading like from the feds to get to that point. So most likely we would look really honestly at 12,000 and uh, 10,000 or a little bit below 10,000 to 9,000. Um, to 9, but from there, then we, I would expect the market to recuperate and start to put up a bottom heading into 2023. So this, these are my ideas, guys. I think this is um, uh, seeing a sell-off is still more likely. But if I want to turn bull, I want to see that top of the uh, descending triangle here on the lock channel at 22,500, uh, 20, um, 20, yeah, 22,500 getting tested ASAP, like within the next, within this week. If we cannot do that, then that 